I've had some really good comments on some of my videos recently and some really good questions. So I thought today I would answer a question I had this week and it was what breed of ewes do I actually run on this farm? I don't think I've really talked about my breeds and, and partly the reason is because when I started this flock I bought, um, I sourced ewes from here and there and everywhere and no one really knew what breed. There were some Dorset Cross, Suffolk Cross, Rito Cross and then um, and then for sure I did have some purebred Ile de France. Most of the original flock is gone and about two years ago I called out a lot that had issues due to age or udders or feet or what have you. I, I went from about 500 and I think 10 or 20 at the beginning uh, my first year in that in that big barn to down to about 300 maybe even maybe even under 300. That year I added 180 composite ewes. Finding ewes in Ontario that have a high health status was important to me after I learned the hard way that health uh, can can definitely put a damper on any of your plans as you go forward. So for me, it was probably too late to, to do the high herd health stuff because what ended up happening is you bring these nice clean ewes into your facility and whatever you have in your barn or whatever ewes you've, I had still in the barn just contaminated the new ones. So in all essence, it's like running a daycare whatever you have in the barn, whatever you bring in, everyone's going to get it. I think for the most part my flock is pretty much inoculated for what they're going to get, um, but it was in that time that I decided I was going to keep replacement ewes back. So those composite ewes I bought from John and Edie Steele. Their farm is called Shepherd's Choice, Shepherd's Choice Genetic Shepherd's Choice Farm, and I will leave a link in the description as to where you can um, you can read a little bit more about, about the breed. But the whole point of that that stock that they made, um, that they spent the time and the money on in creating and developing and improving was definitely for, so pasture people could use them, people like me could use them, uh, they have good maternal qualities but they also have some terminal qualities in them which still means their lambs if they're not meant for replacement stock they'll at least put on meat for your market lambs. So, that's why I went with that. I also went with them because I could get, they're the large, they're probably the largest breeding stock, clean breeding stock place that I could come up with to, to be able to buy 100 at a time or 120. I would say the majority of my flock now um, is based on their genetics. So I call them a steel composite. I just, that's my little nickname for those, for those ewes. And what I've done with them, I've used those as my replacement ewes. So their offspring, I actually bred back to Rito rams. I did that just to put a little more Rito back in them so, they're, so their lambs hopefully will be a little more prolific. I originally bred those steel composites just to terminal hodgepodge, some Dorset, some, some Texel, some Ile de France, uh, just whatever there's there's not a lot of record keeping at that part of my life. But from then on, their daughters, I put back to Rito just to bring some more maternal traits back into those, into their lambs. But what I'm trying to do is find breeds, take F1 crosses, so they're not 100% Rito or 100% whatever. I like these, I like the idea of a composite and a hybrid just to just to cross and make the next generation a little bit better in the trait that you want to improve, if that makes any sense at all. Now at least I have a very youthful flock. It's taken me probably two years to uh, rebuild the flock. I don't have enough numbers to say whether what I'm doing is working or not. I'm definitely new to this whole genetic improvement and retaining stock. The rest of the ewes, the ones that I'm not going to keep back as replacement, I have five Suffolk, five Ile de France. I have four more Suffolks coming this week. I'm just using them because I know he's got quality stock and I know it's something that I can work with. I'll know the black faced ones are Suffolk and the white ones are Ile de France. So then for record keeping, I know what breed is what and then I can judge how they grow and perform. I'm not a purebred operation. I'm not here to sell stock. I do not plan to be in that business, but I do like to see how things perform 
and how they grow and what is economically the best breeds to go with. So I've also been asked um, what breeds are the best breeds to get. I can't answer that for you guys because breeds are very specific to the kind of management you want, the kind of land you have, the kind of operation you have, the kind of management you want. Every you breed is a bit different. Um, they muscle up different. Some are very terminal. I think the more terminal traits you get into some of these ewes, the less lambs they have. So um, that's why I really am trying to concentrate more on figuring out what, what the magic blend is to have that. That's why I like these composites. They, they actually intrigue me somewhat because you want them to be a really good milker and a really good mom. You want, I want them to have two lambs and I want them to be able to get to market at a reasonable amount of time. To have all those things, it's a lot of terminal traits and a lot of maternal traits and I'm just trying to find the right breed for my operation that will help me do that. Okay, so we're in the barn. The boys are right behind me here. So these are my new rams here. So I have, this, the suffix are obviously the black faced rams here. The Ritos, these, these guys here with more of the brown spotted faces. Freckly kind of ones, that guy. Those are the Ritos. They have the little more of the maternal traits on to them. Oh, the Frances are always a bit shy. They're the ones with the curly, the 80s bangs. guy. He's Ile de France. So they look almost like a Dorset, kind of. But Dorsets have really small ears and the, the Ile de France, they have kind of bigger ears. That is the Ram battery and I will split them up and put them on certain use as I, um, as I have them written down in my book, who gets to be on who. Some of these girls, these, these will be the first time they'll get bred this coming week. I'll pull the cedars Wednesday morning, Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. And some of those are actually out of those Rito Rams. So I, I have those written down. I can't put the daughters with the dads. That would be bad. Last year for management tags I used, for 2016 I used pink tags. And for 2017 I used blue tags for all my replacements. And for me that's just an observation that I can see what year each um, replacement ewe lamb they came from. I know kind of how old they are. Uh, and I know all the pink ones can be bred to the Rito Rams. There will be no relation. The blue ones, I always know I have to check because now I'm into some of their daughters. They are bred and confirmed pregnant um, and they are due in March. The ones with lambs on them now, um, I don't really remember. <laughs> I think most of them are just my original use. So they will be a uh, Dorsets and Ritos and whatever that's kind of the flock in its entirety a little bit of this a little bit of that and all mine i did want to take a couple minutes and just thank all my new subscribers and viewers thank you so much for following this channel i've been doing this since i think may is when maybe when my first one came out but for me it's been really fun just journaling what I do and documenting what I do. Full disclaimer, I am not an expert. I'm not a vet. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not even very good at sheep farming. Please take what I say as just things that I do here. I am by no means an expert. I thrive off learning from other people. I, I have some peers that are really close to me. We're a part of a, I'm part of a health, a sheep health group with a vet. So I find in this business, in agriculture in general, we're, we're constantly learning new things and, and that's what I'm doing. What I want to do is share what I learned with you guys. Um, what I found when I first started sheep farming is I didn't have a lot of, I had the, the main guy that I bought my sheep from, he was kind of my mentor. But other than that, I didn't know who to talk to. I was embarrassed. I didn't know, I felt like I was the only one that had problems and issues. I think it's important to just be able to have a bit of a community, a bit of a safe place that people can watch and not feel so bad about themselves. Sheep farming is not easy. It can be very discouraging uh, as well as any farming 
and I just wanted to have this channel to just document the good, the bad, the ugly, the fun, the ridiculous. Sometimes it just takes a sheep farmer to know a sheep farmer. Sometimes it just takes a farmer to know a farmer. Thanks again for watching and uh, have a good rest of the weekend. It's Sunday today. I feel like I'm always vlogging on a Sunday.